If you only believe, nothing will be impossible for you. Can't promise you no pain, no tears, oh no. Can't say you'll never be lonely again, my friend. But you see, there's a remedy that someone who's got everything you need. And if you hear what I'm saying, I'm sure you'll agree that trouble ain't gonna be here every day. Even though sometimes it seems like it won't go away. But after you've done all that you know how, just to keep from breaking down, just believe it's gonna get much better after a while. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm finally recording my weight loss video. This video is long overdue. You guys have been asking for it for a while now and I'm finally getting around to recording it. I was actually waiting until I officially met my goal and my goal weight was 155. I'm not there yet, but I decided, okay, quarantine is not letting up for a good little while and I've gotten a little interesting when it comes to my level of discipline, but we're going to get into that in a moment. But just to start this video, I want to share my beginning weight. So right now I'm going to show you guys what I look like before your girl was doing the most <laughs> and what I look like now. She made me at the college Her friends play my songs and they've been following me Yeah, I don't like to do that much explaining and talking Just know she had coffee with me, yeah I hear you like pizza and dancing Love that is not that romantic, yeah I don't have no time for no antics Your girl had gotten out of hand <laughs> I had gotten really stressed out last year and I don't want to say I was borderline depressed but I had a lot going on y'all and I was a teacher for 10 years and anybody who's an educator you know that if you work for elementary grade levels that you're very active and so I was extremely active during that time I moved around a lot I really didn't even have to work out during that time because I was always busy I was always moving but now that I currently work full-time from home doing YouTube I'm stationary a great deal so I'm usually working from my desk or I'm working from sometimes my bed editing and things like that but I've switched up things a great deal and this year I've been able to lose 30 pounds in a little over three months. <laughs> Y'all don't understand, last year I felt like that goal was so not attainable. I tried so many different things. I tried the egg diet. I tried doing intermittent fasting. I tried uh, meal prepping and I even explored getting a trainer again because I had gotten to the highest weight that I've ever been in my entire life. So let's get into my journey. On January 3rd, I got on the scale at the doctor's office and that was a reality check for me because I didn't know that I had gotten that far out of hand because I'm kind of blessed in that I really still can look good in clothing even with added weight and getting on the scale and seeing that number messed me up. I could have literally bawled my eyes out when I saw that number and my husband was there with me. He could see the expression on my face and how mortified I was to see 190, it actually said 194 at the doctor's office. But granted, I had my clothes on and I had already eaten for the day. So I'm gonna say I was around 190. Still, it's a lot, that was a lot. So after that appointment, I had determined in my mind, I have to get it together. I cannot be in the 200s. I cannot be in a place where I don't feel good about myself. So that experience was very eye-opening for me. And my doctor also told me that I had high cholesterol and I've never had any negative reports when I've gone to the doctor's office. So I was like, okay, Mary, you have to get it together. 
My goal weight for my weight loss journey was 155. Now I didn't actually achieve that goal, but I got very close to actually be in the 150s. At one point during my journey was a miracle for me because I never thought I'd see 150s like ever. <laughs> but I officially got down to 159, which was the lowest weight that I've been this year. Now I'm not that weight now. I'm currently at about 164. And I just, I feel good about myself. I can be in a bikini now and I'll show you guys. I was actually at the pool the other day in my bikini and I felt good. You know, I still have work to do. My waist is not as small as some of these Instagram models, but guess what? It doesn't have to be. Real bodies are still in. We still can be fabulous and feel confident with the bodies that we have, even if they aren't perfect. But I feel great at 164 and I've kind of just been maintaining that weight. Now, I know if I want to get the weight off that I absolutely could, I'll just go back and do the things that I was doing at the beginning of the year. But quarantine has happened and I've kind of gotten a little off balance, but I'm at a comfortable weight now where I feel good about myself and I feel like I can be confident in clothes and out of clothes, which was one of my goals to look good naked because <laughs> I was walking around the house. So, you know, you... I don't know if I'm sharing too many details, but you know how it is when you're looking in the mirror and you see yourself with clothes on and you're like, oh, I look nice. Mm. You know, you can have high-waisted pants on or different pants that kind of press your waist in a little and you can, you know, feel comfortable. But without clothes on, you're like, oh, that gut is still there. Or, you know, my arms look a little flabby or this and that. There are all these different things that you might feel comfortable with clothes on, but when clothes aren't on, you don't feel that great. So... I was in a place where I didn't feel great naked. I felt like, what is going on, Mary? Who have you become? And I was kind of hiding around my husband and I really didn't like that feeling. So I was like, I gotta get it together because I wanna feel good about me. My husband still loved me regardless and felt like I was beautiful either way, but I wanted to do it for me. I wanted to feel comfortable in my skin, whether I had clothes on or not. So now we're gonna get into the how. The first thing that was the most beneficial for my weight loss journey was fasting. Now, I told you guys at the beginning of this year on January 3rd, I officially went to the doctor and I got those horrible numbers. Now what was so perfect is that my church was starting a corporate fast the first full week in January, which was actually January 6th. And this was really good for me and holding me accountable, not only just going through the process myself because I've done different fasts and weight loss, tactics like diets and things like that but I did them by myself and I wasn't successful so having my church going down this path of doing this fast which wasn't necessarily to lose weight it wasn't to do that it was actually just devoting our time and energy to to God and actually taking time to refocus to reset to pretty much dedicate the year to God and to prioritize things of God over other things in our lives like TV and social media and food, which we know can be something that we really indulge in a great deal. The time frame for this particular fast was 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Now that was kind of scary for me because I really did not know if I could do that. I've never fasted. Well, I have. I've actually fasted for like three days and just drink water. But that was a long time ago. I haven't done that in a while. So these past few years, I haven't done anything that extreme. So I was kind of nervous about it, but because my church was doing it, as well as my husband committing to that process, that helped me out tremendously. So that caused me to reset my mind as well as my body. And just having the added layer of it being something that was tied to my beliefs was just even more effective in helping me to reach my goals. So having this weight loss journey here and then determining in my mind that I'm gonna devote my time and energy to the things of God and just honor him with the first part of my year, that just changed the game. So I started at the beginning of the year with that fast with the guideline of 6 a.m. to three. However, I actually didn't start eating until around like 10, maybe 12, because I never eat early in the morning. I generally start eating around 12, but because this fast only had that small window of time, I tried to start a little earlier, but not so early that it's out of my comfort zone. So I would probably start eating some, some days around 10, but mostly around like 11 or 12 and stopping at three. 
And when I was eating, I tried to eat healthier. And I can't believe that I did this, but I also tried to work out moderately. Now, after the first week of doing that pretty intense fast, we moved into the Daniel fast. That was also something that my church was doing. And that was a 21 day fast where we just ate fruits and vegetables and anything that was pretty much plant-based or that came from the earth. My body responded so well to that kind of eating and that kind of lifestyle. And doing that just caused me to be in a place where I feel like my appetite shifted significantly. And I felt like I had so much more energy during that time. It was crazy because I never expected that. I thought I would be depressed and feel like I was being deprived, but I actually felt really good during that time. So during the Daniel fast, I decided to take it a step further and not just do the Daniel fast where I'm allowing myself to eat just those type of foods, fruits and vegetables and healthier options throughout that 21 day period. I also decided to do intermittent fasting. Now I chose to use the common intermittent fasting window, which was the 16, eight. So 16 hours, Per day, I would be fasted, and then eight hours during the day, I'd actually allow myself to eat. During the month of January, after doing two intense fasts, my body got a really great reset and I feel like my relationship with food changed. I feel like my level of discipline was on a completely different level and I could continue this process even longer of just eating, I guess essentially it would be like eating vegan. Now I did allow myself to eat um, eggs, so I guess that would be vegetarian. I often mix those up. So I continued to eat a vegetarian lifestyle for another two months. I did actually eventually start allowing myself to have meat on the weekends because I really wanted this journey to be something that was sustainable and I enjoy meat. I don't necessarily want to completely take that out of my diet. So I just gradually started to incorporate meat, but on the weekends. So during the week I'd eat more so vegetarian options and then on the weekend I'd have meat, but healthier options for meat, like salmon and chicken and things like that. Another thing that I did alongside the healthier eating was to watch my calorie intake. Now, the daily recommended intake of calories for a woman is 2,000 calories, but I decided to chop that almost in half and only allow myself to eat around 1,200 calories. I didn't actually use a calorie monitor or anything. I just tried to guesstimate the amount of calories just by looking at the back of packages and things like that and just ensuring that I wasn't going over 1200 especially during the week I believe the first two or three months now I'm not doing that but <laughs> the first two or three months I wouldn't allow myself to go over 1200 some days my calorie intake was actually at 800 and I felt so full which is crazy so I'd actually start each day by eating eggs and eggs are very protein rich, also low in calories. They are also very good for boosting your metabolism, which is gonna support weight loss. So I would start with that and I try to include some vegetables like spinach in there. And I'd also add some mushrooms and I would decrease the amount of sodium in my diet by using things like Mrs. Dash. Mrs. Dash will become your best friend when it comes to a weight loss journey because it is salt free and it still causes your food to taste really good. So I just use Mrs. Dash in everything that I would make, whether it was salmon, whether it was any type of vegetables, I'd only use that. I wouldn't add any additional butters or any salt seasoning like Obey and things that I used to use in the past. I just took that out of my diet. Now I slowly started to add it now. <laughs> Especially because we're on quarantine and I've just kind of been, you know, switching it up a bit. But um, yeah, in the beginning, I wasn't doing any of that. I only used Mrs. Dash. And I also decided to cut out sugar in my diet. And that was something that was very, very hard for me because I love sugar. I decided to replace those things with fruits that are good for weight loss, but also are sweet. So things like watermelon, which are rich in water, which is very good for your body. And they taste so delicious. Don't you guys just love watermelon? Like I buy those 
every single week and I love snacking on watermelons. So I eat watermelons. I would also eat mangoes. They are rich in vitamin C. They're so good for weight loss as well and they also cause you to feel full. In addition to mangoes, I'd also eat bananas but mostly in my green smoothies. I love green smoothies. You guys have seen on my Instagram where I posted a photo of me with the green smoothie. Those are my go-to. So I usually start my day with the eggs and also a green smoothie. So that's really helped me to get my vegetables in and the nutrients that I need in my body and I try to use a great deal of things that support weight loss when making my green smoothie and if you haven't seen how I make my green smoothie I do actually have a vlog that I'll link in the cards above that shows you guys step by step how I make it and something that's really cool that I started including into my green smoothies that's been so beneficial in helping me to feel full are these fenugreek seeds I've talked about fenugreek seeds before on my channel when it comes to hair growth, but these seeds are so beneficial for so many different things. And health-wise, these are good for lowering blood sugar, they're good for lowering cholesterol, and I actually started incorporating these in my smoothies to help with lowering my cholesterol, as I shared early in the video at my doctor's appointment. She said I had high cholesterol, so I wanted to use them for that, but I also wanted to use them for the benefit of being able to curb my appetite. These are so filling. When I tell you, if you put these in your smoothie, I believe I would use like a tablespoon, sometimes maybe one and a half tablespoon. And y'all, I felt so full. I could not eat much at all when I would use these fenugreek seeds. So if you're looking for something that's gonna help curb your appetite and also cause you to feel fuller longer, then I'd highly recommend using fenugreek seeds. There are so many different ways to use them, but the easiest way for me to, to take these is by putting them in my smoothie. Some people actually grind them up and then put them in their water and drink it like that. That tastes horrible. The only way that I can stand them is in my smoothie. So I just blend them up in my smoothies with all the other ingredients that I use. Another thing that I did that everybody raves about is to drink more water. I try to increase my water intake so much more. I actually decided to only drink water for the first three months and if I were to maybe cheat I would do it with Gatorade Zero and that's what I drink now so I'll either drink water or I'll drink Gatorade Zero. In addition to drinking more water I also decided to add lemons in my water and it's so refreshing. I literally got to a point where I could not drink water without lemons. For those who are unaware lemon water is very beneficial when it comes to weight loss. It helps to increase your metabolism. It also helps to promote fullness and it also is very hydrating and can help with detoxing your body. So I drink lemon water on a regular basis and I absolutely love it. Another thing that I started drinking was green tea. Now the one that I use is this one. It's organic green tea and ginger. Ginger is really good for digestion. Green tea is really good for boosting your energy levels and it's really good for increasing the amount of fat you're able to burn. So I try to drink one cup of green tea in the morning. Sometimes I drink it at night, but for the most part, I drink green tea in the morning. Oh, I almost forgot. I also started including one cup of aloe vera juice in my green smoothies. Aloe vera juice is so great. It's loaded with many vitamins and minerals that our body needs. It helps with boosting immunity. It's great for your hair and for your skin. It's great for any digestive issues you might have. And it's really good for supporting weight loss. So I use that in my smoothies every single day. And I love that it's really great for flushing out toxins as well. So if you aren't using aloe vera juice, you should make be include that in your diet it's so great in the past I would also incorporate apple cider vinegar in my diet but I decided not to do that this time because I really don't like the taste of it and it can also be very damaging to your tooth enamel so I stopped doing that and I just decided to just go the route of doing the lemon water which was better for me and I actually recently purchased the goalie apple cider vinegar gummies I don't know if you guys have heard of these but um I can't really tell you what benefits I've had so far, but they're supposed to be good for weight loss, increasing your energy, and all the benefits that you get from apple cider vinegar, you can get it from these gummies, but they taste amazing. And you can actually have six a day, so this is a really good substitute for eating gummies because if you guys didn't know, I love regular gummies. Any kind of gummies, I love them. And I used to eat a whole bag in a day. So <laughs> this is a better substitute for me. So I've been eating these 
to help support my weight management at this point. These are only 15 calories. Oh, 15 calories for one gummy. And you can actually have up to six a day. So I will allow myself to eat six of these a day, but I try not to eat any other candy or anything during the week. That's what I do now. But in the past, I wasn't taking these. I actually just started taking these, but I'll let you guys know how it goes in a future video. I only have been using them for about a week, so I can't really tell you guys how my body's responding to it. But leave your feedback if you have tried Goalie Gummies. Let me know, do they work for you? Do you like them? Give me some feedback. All right, now let's get into exercising slash working out. Now we know that food is pretty much 80% of the weight loss journey. A lot of people attribute exercising to being the dominating factor, but it's really not. It's really what you're doing in the kitchen that really makes the most difference when it comes to losing weight. So I really tried to focus on the kitchen a great deal, but I also tried to step it up when it comes to working out. So during the three to maybe three and a half months of losing the weight, I would go to the gym about three to four times a week. During that time period of going to the gym, I tried to set a calorie goal for myself. So I started myself off at a lower calorie goal, and then I decided to work my way up to burning more calories throughout that period. So I started at 700 calories, which is a goal that I felt was attainable for me. So anytime I go to the gym, I'd work out on the elliptical. That's my favorite machine. Whenever I go to the gym, if that machine wasn't available, I'd be so upset. But for the most part at my gym, I would get on the elliptical and I'd start at 700 calories and I eventually work myself up to a thousand calories. I love doing cardio. I don't really do a whole lot of weights and any type of lifting. I love getting my cardio in in that way. I don't really like running or anything like that or doing jump rope. I just felt like the elliptical was something that I enjoyed, so I just stuck with that. Now about mid-quarantine, I did have to switch it up a bit because our gyms did close, so I had to resort to getting on my exercise bike at our place. So I would get on my exercise bike while I was editing or sometimes at night. So I'd actually on some occasions do two a days. So I'd actually split it up and do 500 calories in the morning and 500 calories at night. But some days I'd really only just do 400 calories. And that's pretty much what I do now. In the beginning stage, the gym was open so I was able to be consistent and do it that way. So what really did affect my journey in reaching my goal was the gym closing, which I really didn't need to allow that to affect it in that way. But my body just got used to doing that and I enjoyed it. So yeah, I've kind of gotten a little complacent and I've gradually weaned myself off of having to burn so many calories. I just get on my bike and stay up there. Sometimes I stay up there for like an hour and a half and I've maybe burned like four or 500 calories. <laughs> um, but it seems like on my bike, I'm just not, I'm not burning as many calories as with the elliptical. And I like that with the elliptical, I can burn so many more calories in so much less time. I literally have to stay on my bike like two hours, maybe even more than that to get a thousand calories burned. And I really don't have that kind of time to be on my bike. Yeah, so I think I've covered everything. I've talked about fasting. I talked about my workouts, the foods. If you guys would like to see what I eat in a day, let me know down in the comment section. Before I end this video, I do wanna encourage those out there who maybe feel like they can't reach their weight loss goals, that you can absolutely do it. It is definitely possible. I was like you a year ago, feeling like I was in this rut. I felt like I could probably never lose the weight, that I wouldn't have the motivation. That was something that I really struggled with was motivation to be able to keep going, to keep striving and to feel like I could do it. But I just remember often when I was on my journey, hearing God just whispering in my ear, letting me know that I was beautiful, letting me know that I could do it and just motivating me throughout the whole entire process. I remember being on the elliptical several times and I just felt like I had God coaching me along saying, keep going, you got it, you can do this, I'm here with you, you can reach your goals. It was so amazing to feel like I wasn't on this journey by myself, but God was there with me every step of the way. So I encourage you guys throughout this journey, if you feel like you've been trying everything and you're not able to do it on your own, I encourage you to pray about it. God is absolutely wanting to be a part of every aspect of your life and if it's weight loss that you desire 
He can be a part of that. He wants to be a part of that. So allow him into that area of your life. Pray about it. Ask God for the discipline necessary, for the motivation, for the, the will to be able to do what's necessary to get your body on track so that you can be around for a long period of time. That's what I was conscious of. I want to be around and actually be mobile for my kids when I have them. I don't want to be someone that is not able to move freely, that aches every time I move. I wanted to be someone who felt good about themselves and to just be able to achieve a goal that I felt was unattainable. So I just wanted to let you guys know that it's possible and I understand whatever it is that you're going through, I was you. I promise I was you. And I'm still you at times, but we can do this. We just have to give it to God, trust him, and know that it's possible by hearing someone like me say, I get it, I was there, and you can do it. You can do it. We're in this together. So you guys leave your comments and feedback. Let me know. I'm literally thinking about maybe doing the Chloe Ting two week shred challenge. I've said that in another video, but I'm kind of deciding if I want to do it or not. But if you guys, y'all leave some nice comments. Let me know if y'all want to see it. I'm kind of scared to do it because it looks so intense. If you've done it, let me know. How did it work out for you? Did you get some abs? Did your waist get smaller? Let me know. <laughs> but I hope you all enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Turn on those notifications, guys. Please do that because many of you guys haven't been getting notified about my videos and y'all need to be watching these videos. But yeah, that's the end. I love you guys and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Oh,